thanks for coming and sharing some of your Monday evening time with me. Today, we're going to be focusing on reading comprehension strategies for our students. Right now, we've seen as a need within our school district, um, you guys have all expressed the interest in learning these strategies, so we're going to get started on that today. But before we do so, I'd like you guys to participate in a quick icebreaker. I'd like you to think of one word that describes you today on a Monday. Share your name, your teaching assignment, the word, and a brief expla explanation of why. I'll give you guys around five minutes to complete this with your group. Go ahead and get started. Thanks. Okay, now that we've shared our icebreakers, we're going to go ahead and establish some norms of our group. So habits and expectations that we expect all of us to follow, including myself throughout this session. So why don't you guys take a post of the phone in front of you and write two to three different norms that you would like to be followed. So what is reciprocal teaching? Reciprocal teaching is a comprehension-based teaching and discussion strategy that requires students to share the role of the teacher slash students. It involves four specific reading strategies, that being predicting, questioning, clarifying, and summarizing. It's a great way to teach students how to determine important ideas, such as discussing vocabulary, important ideas, and questions that arise from the text, and summarizing information. It can be used across multiple content areas, and it works particularly well with textbooks and nonfiction texts. But I would argue that it could be working with fiction texts as well. Later in this year, Language Arts will be reading Farewell to Manzanar. It is a fictional story, but it's based off the of Japanese internment camps, pairing with social studies. So we will be reading it using the reciprocal teaching strategy to predict what is going to happen with our characters. So up here, why should I use this? One reason is, according to recent research by John Haiti, in 2009, um, reciprocal teaching is among the most powerful instructional practices in increasing student achievement in reading comprehension. It is adapted to almost any challenging text. Like I said, you can use it in any content area. Um, it's engaging for students. They get to work together. They are playing different roles, teacher, student. They are teaching each other, making their connections and it develops both reading and listening and speaking skills. So we've heard a little background about reciprocal teaching and why we should use it, but how do we use it? So I mentioned that there are four different strategies within this reciprocal teaching. There's prediction, clarifying, questioning, and summarizing. In front of you, you will see a passage. It's the Japanese Americans, the war at home, and it's split into four different sections. So we're gonna repeat all four of these steps in each section. You will also see in front of you a reciprocal teaching, teaching report. This is a graphic organizer that I would hand to students to help them walk through the process. Um, noticing that it has um, level one, two, and three questions on the back, which pairs into our questioning and reciprocal teaching triangle that I would put on each um, table group. So to start, we predict what the section will be about. So we're looking just at section one, which has two images here. Um, I'm looking at keywords, key dates. I see Japanese. I see the December 7th, 1941. See a picture of a little girl carrying some luggage. I see another picture of a bunch of buildings. I'm making connections to the Holocaust. So right now, I'm writing evidence for my text and predictions down. The next step that I would do is I'm actually going to read the section. So I'm going to read this as you guys follow along, and then we'll work through the next three parts together. So on December 7th, 1941, Japanese launched a sneak attack on the American naval base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. President Franklin D. Roosevelt called it a date that will live in infamy. America declared war against Japan the next day. Overnight, Japanese Americans found their lives changed. 74 days after Pearl Harbor, President Roosevelt issued Executive Order Number 9066. The order forced over 110,000 Japanese Americans to leave their homes in California, Washington, and Oregon. 
They were sent to live in one of the 10 detention camps in desolate parts of the United States. None of these Japanese Americans had been charged with a crime against the government. Two thirds had been born in the United States and more than 70% of the people forced in the camps were American citizens. Roosevelt's action was supported by Congress without a single vote against it and was eventually upheld as constitutional by the Supreme Court. Yet many scholars came to believe that this order was a day of infamy as far as the Constitution and civil rights were concerned. The people forced in the camps were deprived of their liberty, a basic freedom of the American Constitution. So we made our predictions on our graphic organizer. We read this. We would have read it as a group if we were in our student group. And now we're going to clarify. So clarifying, I would say, um, is very similar to note and notice, the annotating the text. We're discussing areas in the text in which confusion occurred. How can we clarify this con confusion once you've figured it out? Students at this time are going to walk through and ask any questions they may have had. So maybe a, how do you produce that word? What does this word mean? I think the author is saying, I'm guessing by this, that this means blank. So they're making connections, text a self, text a world. They are working on vocabulary, discussing um, words that they may not know. And then also circling and predicting, like this is going to mean this. So as a group, walk through your clarifying part on your graphic organizer. Okay, and you'll see that the third strategy within reciprocal teaching is the question strategy. So remind students that they are generating questions um, there are level one, level two, and level three questions to ensure that you understand it fully. So they are going to create questions and then find their answers within the text. Level one questions are right there. So things that can be answered specifically in the text, they can grab a piece of textual evidence. A level two question is inference is needed. It's a between the lines question. A level three is critical thought question, so it requires their opinion. So right now, within your group, go ahead and write level one, two, and three. You will see that there is a spot for each, and then you also are going to go ahead and answer those. And the last step is summarize. So asking students to summarize verbally within their groups um, what happened in this text. So in the last box, you will see that since it says, as a group, summarize your reading, maintaining the logical order of the text. So why don't you guys take some time and fill out the summary portion of your graphic organizer. Now that we walked through all of the steps within reciprocal teaching, I want you to start thinking about this teaching process. How does this process work for you as a learner? How could it work in your teaching context? And what pitfalls slash tips do you anticipate for implementation? Go ahead and talk in your groups through each of these questions, and then we are going to bring them together as a group to kind of work through them, collaborate together. So I'm just going to bring together what I heard as I was walking around, the reciprocal teaching process, what we saw, how this process can work for you as a learner. This is very beneficial for both oral and visual learners. It doesn't really have that kinesthetic part of it because they're not getting up and moving around. They do have a document in front of them and they are able to work with partners listening to what they said, maybe helping spark interest. Um, working in our teaching context, uh, this can work for multiple different reading passages, whether it be a textbook, an online document, a novel. Um, all of them are work walking through each of the steps. Pitfalls and tips that we anticipate for implementation is a student that doesn't do anything or that they view a blank document as being too much. And in this sense, we could give them these sentence um, starters that are found on the 
um, triangle that you can put in front of groups. If you look at it, it says, I think this will be about blank because blank. So giving them a starting piece may be a good um, place to start. Now that we've walked through the reciprocal teaching process with our passage, I want you guys to have the time to work on an actual mini lesson that you could implement in your content area. So ideas to remember when creating a mini lesson is you want to define what the strategy is and why a reader would use it. You want to define what makes the strategy useful. For example, what is a good prediction? Model it in a fun way. Um, the other day we started this process and we called it the big reveal where we started a picture on our board and it was one square was open and we kept on revealing one then the other then the other. So we were predicting and then we asked questions and we summarized and it was all on a picture. So making something that is engaging to them may be a good start. Um, have students practice in pairs. Before you go into a whole group, have them understand how to do it with someone next to them. Um, have students use it with their text and have students reflect on their strategy use. So when did you use it? How did it help you understand the text better? So in front of you, you have writing utensils, you have post-its. So I want you guys to collaborate together to create a mini lesson and then we're going to share out so that we all have a document with multiple mini lessons that we could help each other out with. So as you guys were working, I wanted to bring up the strategy that I was talking about the language arts department called it. We called it the big reveal. Um, currently, right now, our students are working on the Harlem Renaissance. And one of the artists that we wanted to introduce them to, because it was mentioned in Bronx Masquerade, was Roy D. D. Cavara's um, The Sweet Fly Paper of Life. So this was our big reveal strategy. And we were modeling it after the reciprocal teaching um, process. So the first thing we did is we talked about the um, writing in the observational mode because we are working on investigative writing so the five w's you'll see us um, reviewing those observational writing is writing without judgment you will write only what you can see hear taste smell touch so really getting to observing not opinions um, they use the five w's to guide observational writing who what when where and why so students were asked to look at the photos and write in the observational mode. But before we did that, we took predictions. So the big reveal. When the image is exposed, take at least 30 seconds to look at it and notice details. So this is what they were writing in their writer's notebooks. Try to determine the best you can with limited exposure who, what, when, where, and why. So our first one. Write, oh, I'm sorry, write your response in the response section of your composition notebook. Okay, so we're writing it in our notebook. Here's the first picture that students are looking. So as they're looking at it, observing, okay, we have stairs, it's black and white, so maybe this gives us a time period. Um, I gave them 30 seconds to look at it, they're making predictions, okay, what do I see happening? Does this look like it's city? Does this look like it's a neighborhood? And then I gave them the second piece of the puzzle. So then here they're seeing the wrought iron fence, Again, there's not many details for them to go off of. Um, so 30 seconds of writing in observational mode. I see stairs. I see a fence. Um, what is it? Where is it? They're making predictions, really. City. The next one we see is a trash can, and it has trash spilling out of it. So now they're making connections to themselves. OK, well, at home, my parents would not let garbage spill over. Like Maybe this is a city, and there's a lot going on. And then the last one, there's a child sitting here looking in the corner. And this is when they wanted to start adding their own opinions in there. Oh, she's in trouble, or maybe she's lonely, or maybe she has no friends. But remember, in the observational mode, we only write what we see. So we took all of our predictions together through the whole photo, and they wrote in their notebooks for this. So we modeled this big reveal strategy off of the reciprocal teaching. They were predicting, they were then clarifying, like, Okay, no, this isn't in a neighborhood, it's in a city. I know that it's during the Harlem Renaissance because I'm making the connections. Um, they wrote questions. So a question that they could have had for level one is, I would like to ask the author blank, or what would happen if this? So they were making their questions and then summarizing. 
Um, with photos, it was kind of harder for students because they didn't have the hard evidence of words to grasp from. But the picture definitely drew them in to figure out what, and they were doing the strategies without really knowing they were. So this is just one of the many, many lessons that we um, can share out and we have created today. And by all means, take this, use it how you would in your classroom. Um, students really seem to enjoy it. Okay, I want to thank all of you for being here today. As an exit today, I want you to take this survey to give me feedback on what I can do better to support you or what you see as making improvements for this session. So I want all of you can take a Chromebook out and click on this survey for feedback um, right here. This is a Google survey. Um, this is an anonymous, so please be honest. Please give me as much feedback as you can. I would greatly appreciate it. And again, thanks for being here and taking time out of your Monday night. Have a great night.